Hello, everybody. I am Pastor Pete. It is my privilege to welcome you to Brookings First United Methodist Church. When I mean welcome to the church, clearly I'm not welcoming you to a building because we live in different times. I'm welcoming you to the church that is gathered here on your screen and gathered wherever people log in. I have spoken of different times. I am wearing a mask as part of my encouragement for us to think of keeping others safe. Certainly let's wash our hands, let's, let's observe our social distancing, and let's be kind to each other. I am going to take the mask off. It makes hearing me a bit easier. I do want to pause for a moment and introduce you to the people who make this program work. So I am grateful, grateful to Sam and to Paul, who are part of the technical team that make this work. They give up their time to help make sense of our services. And to the two of you, can I express my appreciation? People don't get to see you, but you guys are behind the cameras, and I'm grateful for the support that you give. So as we pause this evening, I'm going to invite us to pray. O oh God of all creation, you are the beginning and the end of our world. You existed before time and will continue when all time comes to an end. Be with us in our worship tonight as we watch the effects of this virus on our world we choose to respond with song and prayer and scripture breathe your holy spirit into our words that we may have courage for life teach us how to hear you in this time we spend together and so we remind ourselves of who we are as we pray the prayer that jesus taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So it has been custom to stop these Wednesday evening services after confirmation or during the summer holidays. But we are not living in normal times. I want to offer a midweek check-in for those who are feeling that they need to pause in their week. So come and visit us each Wednesday evening. This will go up at 6, but you can check in at any time after 6. Receive some manna in the middle of the week. I am running a midweek Bible study where we go to a 5,000-year-old prayer book. We're going to the book of Psalms, and the Psalms that I pick up, I've entitled Psalms for a Pandemic. We have two readings tonight. I'm going to read first from Acts, and then I'm going to go to Psalm 93. I have a reason for reading this reading from Acts chapter 1. It's Acts 1, verses 6 to 11. So when the disciples had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons that the Father is fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he would said these things as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, 
Two men stood by them in white robes. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Just so far. We give thanks to God for these words from Scripture. Tomorrow is a Christian religious day. Around the world, followers of Jesus will celebrate Ascension Day, which comes 40 days after Easter and always falls on a Thursday. And 10 days after Ascension Day is the Feast of Pentecost, which will take place next Sunday, May the 31st. But we will say more about that later. Tomorrow, Ascension Day, is the moment when we're reminded that Jesus, our Lord, is more than just a great teacher in history. In the words of the Creed, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Ascension Day, the day that is set aside to remember that Jesus ascended into heaven. But, but what exactly does this mean? And especially in this time of social illness and grumpy people and complete disruption of life, does he ascended into heaven mean that Jesus has gone away and left us on our own left us to our own devices during a pandemic. And to help answer this, we need to understand the biblical concept of ascension. And for me, the best way to understand this would be for us to use the prayer book that Jesus would have used. And so I'm going to take us to the book of Psalms. I'm taking us to Psalm 93, which will provide a lens that helps us understand ascension, a lens that helps us understand the world of Jesus and the world of his disciples. Psalm 93, there are just five verses. The Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, he's put on the strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established, it shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord forevermore. Amen. I do hope that you have a Bible handy. Uh, maybe I just need to give you a moment to find your Bible. Maybe you need to blow dust off that Bible. I'm not judging. But if you could find your Bible, uh, Psalm 93, five verses, but verses that I think help us in the kind of times we live in Help us understand the ascension of Jesus and give us courage for today. Verse 1 begins by telling us that the Lord reigns robed in majesty. Verse 2, the world is established and the throne of the Lord is established. So the Lord reigns, he's robed in majesty, the world is established, the throne of God is established, and just as your imagination is beginning to go to work, I need to remind us that you and I are tempted to use 21st century filters to read a prayer that is 5,000 years old. So let me take us back to the world in which this was written that we understand exactly the picture that's being painted. Because this, will, 
this was a world that believed that the earth was a flat disk with edges that you could literally fall off the edge of the world a flat disk held in place by four pillars a flat disk that is covered by a dome that is called the firmament or the sky and there are holes in the sky through which water falls to give us rain and you know there are holes because at night you look at them and you see the holes in the sky which today we know to be stars and God holds all of this together as one of the Psalms says in the palms of his hand God supervises the good order of creation and so when I go back to Psalm 93 verse 1 the world is established it shall not be moved your throne is established when we say the world is established we are saying it is safe in the hands of God when we say God's throne is established it means God is securely planted and no harm shall come to this world if you can use imagination the sense of God sitting on a firmly established throne holding these four pillars of the earth steady so that the earth can be safe then the psalmist says but but I see danger coming flood waters are rising Psalm 93 verse 3 the floods have lifted up O Lord the floods have lifted up their voice the floods lift up their roaring now I know you guys in the Dakotas are familiar with flooding flooding that's generally quiet you just see the water rising you need rather to think of the Middle East where they have dry river beds and then a thunderstorm and the floods that come rushing down these riverbeds and anyone who has been incautious enough to build too close to the edge of the river or anyone who might be storing something in what is previously a dry riverbed will discover the floods rushing down the river and washing everything out that that is being stored there or being built there and the reassurance of the psalm that even when the flood waters are roaring God will hold you steady let me read Psalm 93 verse 5 your decrees are very trustworthy holiness fits your house O Lord forevermore which borrows from the idea that God's holiness is found in God's house and consistent throughout scripture God doesn't live in a place the dwelling place of the Lord is the heart of a person so when we speak of God's holiness being found let's not get trapped into thinking of God living in the temple the prophets throughout the Old Testament Jesus' teaching throughout the New Testament was at pains to say God lives in our lives you don't visit God in a building you discover God's holiness indwelling us as people and so when the floods come do not be afraid because God's holiness is holding you God's holiness is keeping you safe keeping you grounded keeping you firm so to go back to my question of Ascension Day did Jesus leave us and go away to somewhere else and Psalm 95 is quite clear the Lord reigns robed in majesty but does not reign from somewhere else God reigns in our hearts the Lord's holiness is here with us on earth God is looking after us and even if we think the flood waters are rising and we become unsafe our foundations will not be shaken because God is with us his holiness 
holds us, His holiness is established, we are safe. If you feel like, for example, the floodwaters of illness are rising on earth, God has a firm hold of our world. If you feel like the floodwaters of financial pressure are rising, God is holding our world steady. If you feel the rising floodwaters of dissent and angry words between people, God is holding us steady. And so Ascension Day reminds us that the Lord is on his throne. But God's throne is our hearts. God is clothed with majesty, but he's holding us steady. He's not somewhere else. He's not far away in heaven, wherever heaven might be. His holiness is right here amongst us. Many years ago, Chris Tomlin wrote this into a song, a song about the Lord who reigns, who's robed in majesty. I'm going to revisit a song from my past, and if you'd like to sing with me, feel free to do so. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, And so as we close this time of reflection, allow me to pray for us. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the reminder that you hold us steady. When we feel shaky, when we feel like the floodwaters are rising, Help us to remember that you hold our foundations firm. Your throne is established and you reign. You reign over our world and you reign over our hearts. And so we pause and pray 
pray for you to hold our nation steady. Enable us to be kind with each other. Help us to put our angry words aside and be willing and be willing to be kind. Enable us to live with differences of opinion without needing to insult each other. We pray grace over our nation where there is racial tension. Grant us your love that we might discover your peace. We pray for our state. Keep your hand on our state. Keep the people of South Dakota safe. We pray for our town. We are grateful for the leadership in our town and ask you to bless those who lead us. And we pray for our homes. Establish our homes. May your love rule over our homes. And we pray for our hearts. Keep our hearts safe. Keep our hearts still. Enable us to be people who give you the throne of our hearts. So receive our prayers and continue to use us as your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. And so may God bless you. May God keep you. May God go with you. And may you in turn become God's blessing to others. Good night. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great.